Well, hi everyone and welcome back. This is Bob the Science Guy. Greetings from Northern Michigan. Today we're going to continue our look at The World Upside Down, a Biblical Earth documentary from 2020. This is a documentary that came out talking about the Young Earth Creationist Movement and the biblical explanation of the creation of the Earth. Today we're going to have a look at the lights in the sky, the stars, the planets, the moon, the sun. Let's cue up the music and see how the Young Earth Creationists explain these interesting phenomena. <laughs> We are told by the world today that the nearest star outside of our solar system is 4.4 light years away. This means that the nearest star is 24.94 trillion miles away. Boy, you guys sure do like your big numbers and don't use exponents very well, do you? That's one of the reasons that we use terms like light years to describe the distances between stars. Now let's do a little thought experiment. We're all familiar with an American football field. It is 100 yards from goal line to goal line. If we put a yoga ball 30 inches in diameter on one goal line to represent the sun, and we put a marble on the other goal line 100 yards away to represent the Earth, that would be about the scale of one astronomical unit. Now, to give you an idea, the moon would be about the size of a BB, about 23 centimeters away from the marble that is the Earth. How far on that scale would it be to the nearest star? Well, I live in Michigan, so we'll start in Michigan, and then we're going to go to the Bathurst Lighthouse off the coast of Perth, Australia. But that's not quite far enough yet. We have to make a right turn and go up to Calcutta, India. Fifteen thousand miles total to get the equivalent on that 100 yard scale of the distance from our sun to the next nearest star, a little over four light years away. It's a long way, dude. Now, one thing that I did want to mention, but did you have noticed this little streak up here? You know what that is? I'm pretty sure that's a satellite. One of the fastest jets in the world is the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird with a top recorded speed of 2,071 miles per hour. If stars truly are that far away, it would take the Blackbird 1.4 billion years to reach the nearest star. You know something? That's an awesome, yet somehow irrelevant statistic. Is the SR-71 designed to fly in space? Is it designed to go from star to star? Nope. I can tell you it'll go from New York to London, England in a little over two hours. It's not made to go to the moon or even into orbit. Now, objects that are in orbit, such as the space shuttle, fly along at about 17,500 miles an hour. The Earth itself orbits around the sun at about 30 miles a second. You know, even those speeds pale in comparison the time it would take to travel from our sun to another star. So... What's your point, dude? According to the Bible, however, stars are much, much closer. Genesis 1, verses 14 and 15 say, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, 
to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Notice that God placed the lights within the firmament and not outside of it. You know, just a couple of quick questions, if you don't mind. If all of the stars were within the firmament, which you say is a solid object, wouldn't they all be the same distance away from us? Yet the stars that we measure in the sky at night are at different distances from us. How do you explain that? Perhaps the firmament is many light years thick. I could buy that. How many light years thick? And how far down does it extend towards the surface of the earth? Have we ever imaged it or gotten any readings on how high it actually is? And finally, the farthest galaxies that we can see are approximately 46 billion light years away. Is it possible that that's the location of the firmament, 46 billion light years away? Is there anything in the Bible that specifically says how far away the firmament has to be? If the firmament was 46 billion light years away, could there be objects in the night sky that were closer than 46 billion light years? Would the firmament have to be 46 billion light years wide, or should I say 46 billion light years thick, in order for us to place the stars at different levels in the firmament? Would the firmament obstruct the light of distant stars more than the light of near stars? What are the optical characteristics of the firmament? Are these questions the Bible can answer? Can you answer them? This tells us that the stars are located in the sky directly above us. Have you ever noticed that we see the same stars, such as the North Star, in the same constellations, such as the Little Dipper, every night? You know, you may have a point there. Assuming weather conditions are clear enough, you can see the North Star every night, every night of the year. But then again, can you see Orion every night of the year? How about the other zodiac constellations? Can you see all 12 of them on any night of the year? Or is there parts of the year that you can see some of them, but not others? And six months later, you see the others, but not the first group. How do you explain that, Sonny? This is because we are not traveling through a chaotic, ever-expanding universe. If we were, we would see different stars every night. Yet we do see different stars every night when it comes to things that are on the celestial equator, not the celestial pole. Let's see if we can get a little basic geometry together here. If you look at the celestial sphere that is around the Earth, there is a celestial equator and there are two celestial poles. If you have a star like the North Star that is located at one of the celestial poles, as the Earth goes around in its orbit around the Sun, it's always above the North Pole. We can see it all year long. But if you have some constellations that are at the celestial equator, such as the zodiac constellations, as we go around the Sun, we only see half of them because the other half is blocked by the sun. Until we get around to the other side of the sun, we can see them, but we can't see that first group. You see how that geometry works out? So first, your idea that the Nor if we saw the North Star all year long, that somehow invalidates the rotation or the orbit of the Earth is erroneous. Second of all, you said that if we were indeed orbiting around the sun, the stars would change every night. They indeed do. The zodiac constellations. So your first point is irrelevant, and your second point supports the idea that the Earth is orbiting around the sun. You're not really doing too well here, guy. But I have high hope for you. Keep it up. We are on a stationary ground, and God has placed a set number of stars directly above us. Their distance away can be measured in miles and not in light years. Well, cool. How many miles would that be? I'll wait. Well, guys, now that we have some of the questions of the firmament cleared up, 
sort of. Let's go on to the actual composition of stars. What are they? How do they behave? What does science and the Bible have to say about them? So hit that little like and subscribe down in the corner there. Stop by and say hi to my Patreon. Just let me know you're thinking about me. And I'll see you next week with the stars. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thanks for stopping by and take care.